This is the story of Liu Fan, who reincarnated as a golden lion with big balls. I mean he reincarnated with a system that made him stronger no matter what he did, whether it was breathing, eating, or anything else. The story begins with the revival of spiritual energy in the heart of Lion's Mountain which triggered a chaotic response from the ferocious beasts that roamed the land. The creatures once dormant now ran rampant in a nearby valley. Amidst the turmoil, a girl in tattered clothes sprinted desperately, but she had two huge problems. The first one was that she was tired and the second was that she was being pursued by a group of soldiers who shouted commands at her to stop and surrender. But the girl pressed on, her eyes catching sight of the beasts charging through the valley. Frustration boiled among the soldiers, and one of them lost patience and fired a bullet. The commander rebuked the hasty action and reminded him that ferocious monsters inhabited this territory. But it was too late, suddenly a mutant pig leaped out of the valley, landing menacingly before the soldiers. The commander realized that the bullet must have struck the creature's fangs. Enraged, the mutant pig charged at the soldiers, who gripped by horror fled from the oncoming threat. The commander demanded that they stand their ground, but nobody paid heed to his orders. In a daring move, he retrieved a rocket launcher and launched a rocket at the mutant pig, but he was left astonished when the mutant pig skillfully dodged the projectile. The commander quickly started loading another rocket, sure that one more shot was enough to take it down. However, a sudden thunderous roar echoed through the entire forest, interrupting the tense standoff. Upon the cliff, the regal figure of the ruler of Lion's Mountain, the Golden Lion, materialized. A soldier was awestruck by the lion's appearance and questioned if the lion's fur was real gold. His dumb companion suggested a test and began firing bullets at the majestic creature. The Golden Lion charged through the hail of bullets, leaped off the cliff, and gracefully landed on the ground. With a powerful swipe of his paw, he sent the dumb soldier hurtling away. The commander saw this and aimed the rocket launcher at the golden lion, yelling a challenge. However, the lion swiftly closed the distance, inserting his finger into the launcher's muzzle. The resulting reverse blast decimated the commander. Surveying the aftermath, he noticed the lifeless bodies of soldiers scattered around. A moment of introspection led him to acknowledge that this was his fault for being too strong and not controlling his strength. But he also blamed the soldiers for leading the beast tied to the lion's mountain. Internally, he reflected on his human origins. His name was Liu Fan, an orphan who had barely graduated from university and had started working as a part-timer. However, he accidentally crossed to the Earth Star and was reborn as a demonic beast, the Golden Lion. Suddenly, notifications flooded in, informing him that his stats had increased. Lion cried out in frustration and questioned why the system was enhancing his strength no matter what he did. He then turned his attention to the mutant pig, but the creature was intimidated and hastily retreated. Another message arrived, indicating that by scaring the weak wild boar, his prestige had increased. Just then, Beast Parrot arrived and started praising him for effortlessly eliminating a group of monkeys with a mere movement. But Golden Lion told him to stop the flattery and inquired about the girl pursued by the soldiers. A Beast Green Snake provided unfortunate news. The girl had been affected by the explosion and fallen into the wave of monsters. Golden Lion peered down from the cliff, witnessing the monsters bowing to him. Another message flashed, congratulating him for gaining prestige points for subjugating the monster wave. Amidst the beasts, an unconscious woman lay injured and unresponsive. Golden Lion with his big balls approached her and the monsters made a way for him to walk through. He observed her closely and detected that the girl was clearly dead, but there was a peculiar energy surrounding her. To unravel the mystery, he exhaled a purple mist at the girl. In an unexpected turn, a soul emerged from her body, hovering in the air. As the girl's eyes met the Golden Lion's, he smiled, recognizing the uniqueness of this unforeseen encounter. Within the depths of Lion's Mountain, inside a cavern, the ghost girl wept as the golden lion reclined on his throne. He told her not to cry and reminded her that the dead have no tears. He then suggested that if she didn't want to turn into a ghost, she should go and get reincarnated. However, he was interrupted by a system message stating that a ghost had been detected, recommending he bind with it as soon as possible. Golden Lion was startled by this unexpected message, as he hadn't done anything to trigger such a system notification. Filled with bewilderment, he questioned the appearance of this message since, so far, he had only received stat point increase notifications. Determined not to be deceived by the system, he resolved to make careful plans and prioritize completing the mission. Amidst his musings, a voice interjected saying that he had gone overboard. It noted that the ghost girl was genuinely afraid. 
Green Candle Demon approached the girl, soothing her fears and explaining that the king's intentions were not malicious. The king had infused his demonic energy into her soul to condense it, and she herself had also relied on his energy to transform into a demon. However, solely depending on the king's demonic aura wasn't sufficient to complete her transformation into a demon. Two conditions needed to be met. The first was her special constitution, and the second was the obsession in her heart. Intrigued by the circumstances that led the girl to be pursued by humans, Candle Demon asked for her story. The ghost girl hesitated at first, but after some time, she revealed that her name was Xiao Ling and she was a resident of Mang Village, situated on the northern mountainside of Lion's Mountain. After the restoration of spiritual energy, the people in her village began disappearing one by one, leaving only about 20 to 30 people. A few days prior, a group of armed soldiers stormed the peaceful settlement, taking villagers captive. The soldiers commanded the captives to maintain silence and issued an order for an old man to head into the forest. The old man pleaded to be spared from entering the forest where he had lost his son but was met with brutality. The soldier threatened him by pointing a gun at his grandson, causing the old man to comply with their commands. With a heavy heart, he walked into the ominous forest. As he traversed the woodland, he experienced unbearable pain, and his legs trembled. Suddenly, his eyes turned red, and veins bulged on his forehead. In a mysterious and sudden turn of events, he vanished before everyone's eyes, leaving them bewildered. But the soldiers forced more villagers into the forest. Each time, the same strange phenomenon occurred, the villagers would vanish without a trace. Xiao Ling realized that the soldiers were using the villagers to find their way through the mysterious forest. The disappearance of each villager served as a marker, forcing the next one in line to move forward. A soldier announced that they were nearing their destination, marking it as the last attempt. The attention then shifted to Xiao Ling, and the soldier instructed her to enter the forest. The black fog of the forest seemed to have hallucinogenic effects, and as she walked into the fog, she unconsciously moved in one direction. Suddenly, she saw her parents and called out to them. However, her foot slipped, and she fell down, losing consciousness. Upon regaining awareness, Xiao Ling found herself confronted with the true purpose of their journey, the flower, and the coffin. She realized that these people had destroyed her village, forcing her parents into the black fog to obtain these items. She could not destroy the coffin, so she decided to consume the mysterious flower. However, after ingesting the flower, her body became remarkably light, and her eyes could now see clearly at night. Soon the soldiers discovered the place, so she had to hide and watch as they took away the coffin. A man shouted at the soldiers, questioning them about the flower. He insisted on acquiring both the coffin and the flower, threatening not to pay any money if they failed to deliver both items. After failing to find the flower, they started chasing her, and eventually, she arrived at Lion's Mountain. Candle Demon expressed anger at the evil human's actions and cursed them. The Golden Lion sat in contemplation and realized that Xiao Ling had consumed the flower from the coffin, granting her a special constitution. He then thought about the second condition, the obsession that had appeared in her heart, revenge. He recognized that the coffin and flowers that drove mercenaries mad must be some kind of treasure. Since this had happened in his area, he felt uncomfortable not knowing the whole story. It was the first time spiritual energy had appeared, so he couldn't help but wonder what changes the second spiritual energy would bring and the system had also asked him to bind with the ghost. So, he approached her and stated that he didn't care about her past, but if she became his ghost, her matter would become his matter. He looked at her with a smile and asked if she was willing to be his ghost. Xiao Ling, with teary eyes, expressed her willingness to follow him forever. Golden Lion received a message confirming the successful completion of the task. The reward for completing this task was one young body fragment, and the message specified that ten fragments could be exchanged for a complete young body. Golden Lion exclaimed in shock and wondered whether this meant he could become human again. Ever since he was born as the Golden Lion, he was given a system that made him stronger regardless of what he did. However, now the system had begun assigning missions and rewarding him upon their completion. As he examined the upcoming mission, which entailed aiding the ghost in overcoming her obsession, he noticed a reward labeled as a mysterious opportunity. He speculated that if a mere fragment could potentially restore his young body, then this mysterious opportunity must be even more amazing. Turning to Xiao Ling, he inquired about her current goal. 
Was it vengeance against those who wronged her? Xiao Ling hesitated, swearing that she did not want to cause trouble for him. With a sorrowful look, she remarked that now she was his ghost and didn't have a home either. There were people she cared about, but none of them were alive, and she didn't want to put others in danger. Golden Lion realized that despite her young age, she had a heart full of worries. Suddenly, he exhaled purple mist, conjuring a small golden lion. Presenting it to her, he declared it was his clone and tasked with ensuring her protection. He explained that the imminent second surge of spiritual energy would not only bring beast waves, but also transformations to Lion's Mountain. Hence, his original form needed to remain here to safeguard their home. He then emitted a pink bubble containing something inside it. The bubble soared towards her, settling on her hand. When the bubble burst, Xiao Ling discovered a dagger within. Observing the unique animal fang, she sensed its exceptional sharpness and potent energy, wondering if this was the king's energy. Golden Lion explained that traversing the black fog was a difficult task, so it was good to have a sharp weapon. Xiao Ling was surprised by his generosity and thanked him. Just then, Candle Demon also transformed into a mini version, suggesting that since the road ahead had black fog she would need light for the challenging journey. Xiao Ling smiled and expressed her gratitude. Sometime later, in the northern lion's mountainside at Mang Village, the trio walked through the forest. Xiao Ling pointed out that this was the area where their villagers had vanished that night. The candle demon inquired about the previously mentioned black fog, and Xiao Ling clarified that it had dissipated after moving the coffin. Meanwhile, the golden lion sensed a strong ghost aura in the vicinity. A few moments later, they encountered some lifeless skeletons further ahead. Xiao Ling's gaze fixed on one of the skeletons, recognizing Grandpa Lai's clothes. With a heavy heart, she lamented that they had all fallen victim to the black mist. Candle Demon expressed horror at the malevolence of the situation, contemplating how those who perished yesterday had turned into bones today. Golden Lion began chanting a prayer to release the trapped souls. Ethereal light ascended to the sky as the spirits found liberation. He then informed her that he had purged the wronged souls, allowing them to enter the cycle of reincarnation. Grateful, Xiao Ling thanked him, but the lion himself wasn't sure if these unjust dead ghosts, who had absorbed spiritual energy at Lion's Mountain would truly be able to enter the reincarnation cycle. After burying the bodies, Candle Demon expressed a hope for the deceased to rest in peace. However, Xiao Ling revealed her ongoing concern about not finding her parents. Candle Demon suggested digging deeper, but before they could proceed, Golden Lion warned of nearby people. Despite the absence of war, the smell of gunpowder indicated that these individuals were heavily armed. Xiao Ling, alarmed, looked toward the location, realizing it was where the coffin used to be. She questioned whether these people were still there, recognizing the potential danger. At the location, three soldiers were engrossed in their meal. One of the angry soldiers expressed admiration for Xiao Ling's hiding ability and suggested that if they caught her, they could enjoy themselves and then kill her. Frustrated, he complained about his inability to eat. A sly soldier teased him for having bad taste and questioned if they would find it wonderful dining with a pair of corpses. Confused, their commander asked for clarification. The sly soldier kicked a skeleton's head, revealing that these were the girl's parents. If she wanted to find them, she would have to return to this spot. And then, they burst into laughter. Xiao Ling, witnessing this heartless scene, felt anger bubbling within her. However, Golden Lion restrained her and warned that someone else was approaching. Indeed, a helicopter arrived, and a figure could be seen descending from it using a rope. A robust woman soon arrived, and the soldiers greeted her as leader Mei Yun. Mei Yun questioned whether the foolish Lu Yi had discovered the coffin. The commander clarified that they were still on the lookout for the flower. However, Mei Yun dismissed the significance of the flower, considering it a useless item. To her, the real treasures were the engravings on the coffin. She then leaped into a pit, scooped up some soil, and declared it to be the thing she was looking for, three life soul soil. Just then, a message appeared before Golden Lion, shocking him. The message revealed that the system had detected the three life soul soil, and he gained a new attribute called demonic knowledge. Golden Lion was surprised, as it was his first time acquiring the demonic knowledge attribute. This attribute allowed him to vividly perceive the intricate details of his veins. He then looked at the green snake's vein lying in front of him. However, she misinterpreted his gaze and blushingly questioned him about it. But our single virgin golden lion redirected his attention and never looked back at her. He then pondered on how the system was making him stronger regardless of his actions, but he had never awakened such a special ability before. He could now even see the spiritual energy surging within the veins. Suddenly, a shocked expression appeared on his face as he noticed that many spiritual energy veins were converging at a single point. 
Meanwhile, at the location of the coffin on the mountainside near Mang village, the commander praised Mei Yun for her significant achievement in discovering such valuable soil. Mei Yun smirked and asserted that what she had accomplished wasn't a great achievement. The commander understood her intention, chuckled, and assured her that they would keep it a secret. But Mei Yun abruptly turned, brandishing her dagger, and ominously declared that only the dead could keep secrets. She offered them a chance to die a painless death and ordered them to end their own lives. The soldiers realized the imminent danger. They shouted curses at her and started firing bullets at her. Mei Yun remained unfazed and her bracelet suddenly glowed granting her some kind of ability. With a swift maneuver, she slashed her sword and eliminated all foes in an instant. Mei Yun walked confidently toward the pit and mocked Lui, who had expended life-saving treasures, manpower, and numerous resources. However, in the end, she was the one who reaped the most benefits. She declared that Lui's blindness was to blame and emphasized that while the coffin might be precious, the three life soul soil was more magical. Mei Yun then made a cut on her palm and dropped some blood on a stone that emitted a strange aura. She revealed her cunning plan, crediting her idea of using villagers to lead them to the coffin. Xiao Ling, fueled by anger, attacked Mei Yun from behind. However, somehow Mei Yun sensed the threat instinctively and swiftly slashed her sword. Xiao Ling ducked down in panic and managed to dodge the attack. Candle Demon was shocked and questioned how Mei Yun had sensed the impending attack. Meanwhile, Xiao Ling came to the realization that she need not fear being cut by a sword, as she was a ghost. Mei Yun, now aware of an intruder, cautiously stepped back, only to realize that no one was there. However, she remained convinced that her bracelet couldn't be wrong. Retrieving a pair of glasses, she put them on and spotted Xiao Ling, whom she referred to as a small ghost. Xiao Ling shouted her intent to seek revenge for her parents. Mei Yun mocked her, questioning who she was and when she had supposedly killed her parents. Xiao Ling was shocked to hear that she didn't remember her. Mei Yun smirked and stated that she couldn't remember how many ants she had killed before. Xiao Ling lost her cool after hearing this and charged at her, and the fierce battle commenced. Golden Lion observed the scene and was puzzled by Mei Yun's lack of surprise or fear upon encountering a ghost. He speculated it might not be her first time confronting ghosts, and maybe she even had a way of dealing with them. Golden Lion noticed something wrong, and he reacted swiftly, sending a golden energy to pull Xiao Ling away from harm. Thankfully, she wasn't injured, and only a little of her clothes were torn. Xiao Ling was shocked and wondered how it was even possible since she didn't have a physical form. Mei Yun acknowledged the quick reaction and revealed that her sword was designed to deal with ghosts. Xiao Ling realized that now she could only dodge and wait for a blind spot to appear. Candle Demon urged the Golden Lion to intervene and assist, as Xiao Ling had just become a ghost and was no match for an Awakener. Golden Lion's eyes glowed with murderous intent and accompanied by an evil smile. He declared that revenge is exacted by one's own hand. Mei Yun's bracelet glowed, and she swung her sword confidently, certain that it was going to hit her opponent. However, she was left shocked when she realized that no one was there. Xiao Ling seized the opportunity and caught her in a deadlock. Mei Yun was shocked and couldn't understand how her bracelet could be wrong. After the battle concluded, Golden Lion approached the scene and commended Xiao Ling's performance in her first battle. Candle Demon was confused and sought an explanation for the situation. Golden Lion revealed that Mei Yun's bracelet was a magical weapon capable of detecting killing intent and informing her about the direction of attacks. This explained why she had dodged Xiao Ling's initial attack. Later, she used goggles to confirm her presence, but she ultimately trusted the bracelet more, as she might have suffered under illusion spells in the past. Consequently, Mei Yun no longer believed entirely in what she saw. Candle Demon grasped the strategy and realized that he had used killing intent to disrupt her senses. Golden Lion then cautioned Xiao Ling against recklessness in the future. However, just then, a figure appeared behind Xiao Ling and accused her of having hidden helpers. Xiao Ling was taken aback and wondered how Mei Yun had revived. In a swift move, Mei Yun attacked, but Xiao Ling skillfully blocked the assault with her knife. Knowing that Mei Yun's weapon was designed to combat ghosts, and considering both Candle Demon and King were in soul states, she was determined to keep her at bay. Seizing an opportunity, Xiao Ling deftly parried Mei Yun's assault and managed to successfully sever her arm. Candle Demon applauded her strength and acknowledged her impressive skills. However, the unexpected happened as threads emerged from Mei Yun's severed arm, miraculously reattaching it to the wounded limb. Golden Lion was certain that Mei Yun had died, so he couldn't help but wonder how her clone remained alive. He then employed his recently acquired skill, Demonic Knowledge, to perceive an aura that he identified as three life soul soil. 
Remembering that Mei Yun had previously dropped her blood on the spirit soil, he deduced the origin of her resilience. Taking advantage of her reattached arm, Mei Yun wielded it as a whip and launched an attack on Xiao Ling. Despite the increased reach, Xiao Ling strategically blocked the assaults, noting that her extended attack range came at the cost of slowing down her sword drawing speed. Finally identifying an opening, she closed in and delivered a decisive strike, slashing Mei Yun across the chest. However, this action backfired as bloody threads emerged from her wound, attempting to ensnare Xiao Ling. Candle Demon urgently turned to Golden Lion and urged him to intervene. But he hesitated because his clone was also a primordial spirit copy, and it would be terrible if he got hurt. He didn't want to risk his life. Mei Yun successfully captured Xiao Ling, leaving no room to escape. Xiao Ling had lost all hope, but just then, a golden light cut through the bloody threads, and a voice questioned how they dared to bully his people. Golden Lion manifested in a half-humanoid form and swiftly rescued Xiao Ling. Realizing the gravity of the situation, he had decided to use the body fragments and obtained a level 1 Yang body. He then reprimanded Xiao Ling for her recklessness, and she looked at him with a mix of shock and gratitude. Just then, Mei Yun's scream attracted their attention, and Golden Lion instructed both Xiao Ling and Candle Demon to close their ears and empty their minds. He then unleashed the lion's roar, which released energy waves. When they struck Mei Yun, her body turned to ashes, and only her weapon remained lying on the ground. Golden Lion picked up the weapon, acknowledging its worth. A system message promptly appeared, congratulating him for defeating a novice rank Awakener. This led to a substantial increase in his strength, prestige, resilience, and demonic knowledge. He had also absorbed the three life soul soil, and the acquisition of Mei Yun's sword bestowed upon him a new attribute, sword skill. He was surprised to discover that this weapon had the capability to expand his attributes. Despite the pain caused in his throat by the use of Lion's Roar, he found it worthwhile. Suddenly, he noticed the unexpected presence of hair on his chin, prompting a shocked exclamation. He criticized that system and wondered if the human form also had levels. Despite his complaints, he had to acknowledge that this form was quite handsome. A system message clarified that his body level was one, and only one out of the ten fragments was in use. Golden Lion then inspected under his pants, expressing a desire to bring this part back to its original form. Candle Demon arrived and remarked that he didn't need to exert excessive power. He had turned Mei Yun's clone into ashes, and three life soul soil had also been blown away. But he remained indifferent to the details and asserted his lack of concern for small matters. Candle Demon, however, couldn't help but praise his new look, declaring it remarkably handsome. Just then, the system informed Golden Lion of inhaling air infused with three life soul soil, resulting in an increase in his demonic knowledge and its promotion to the second level. Golden Lion couldn't help but marvel at the system's ability to enhance his strength through mere breathing. Xiao Ling bowed to him and expressed gratitude, but a window above her head indicated that the quest was still incomplete. Observing this, Golden Lion realized that her revenge was not yet accomplished, and he also lacked knowledge about the contents of the mysterious coffin. Putting on a piece of clothing, he addressed Xiao Ling, acknowledging her unwavering determination for revenge. However, if they wanted to investigate further, they had to go down the mountain. Soon, the sun began to rise, and Candle Demon hastily sought refuge in the folds of Golden Lion's clothes, recognizing her lack of a physical body. Witnessing this, Xiao Ling desperately pleaded for help and tried to join Candle Demon beneath Golden Lion's attire. Golden Lion was taken aback and rejected her attempt emphasizing its inappropriateness. Instead, he gestured towards Mei Yun's lifeless body and proposed that she could take possession of it. However, Xiao Ling vehemently refused and started throwing a tantrum. When he asked her about her reason for refusing, she declared that Mei Yun's body was too ugly. After some time, despite her initial reluctance, Xiao Ling eventually took over Mei Yun's body. Golden Lion reminded her of the guidance given, instructing her to impersonate Mei Yun if they encountered any mercenaries on their way. Though reluctant, Xiao Ling agreed. Golden Lion then, with a smile, declared that it was time to face the mysterious organization. Xiao Ling, currently occupying Mei Yun's body, and Golden Lion, concealed in his flawless disguise, arrived at a base where a soldier greeted her as the leader. The soldier eagerly asked if she had discovered anything. Mei Yun affirmed her findings and suggested returning to their base. The soldier, filled with curiosity, asked about Golden Lion but Mei Yun swiftly silenced any inquiries, cautioning against prying too much. Soon, the helicopter took flight toward their base, and Golden Lion received a message stating that his courage had increased since he was using a flying vehicle. 
the journey continued, and after a while, the pilot informed them that they were approaching Lion Ridge City and would be landing in 10 minutes. Below, outside the city, lay a grim scene with numerous monster corpses and people scavenging for resources. A soldier informed Mei Yun about the desperate gangs scavenging even the remains of monsters, trading organs and bones on the black market. Their audacity stemmed from the potential of finding a monster core, making them impervious to the risk of being killed by ferocious beasts. However, the soldier's laughter came to a halt when he noticed Mei Yun's serious expression. He then began praising her, acknowledging that following an awakener like her was their sole path to financial success. Meanwhile, Golden Lion observed the stark contrast between the devastated city and the flourishing Lion's Mountain. He speculated that the destruction might be a consequence of the restored spiritual energy, leading to an apocalyptic aftermath. His contemplation was abruptly interrupted by a system message, indicating that his wisdom had increased due to his feeling of pity towards them. The helicopter landed, and the pilot informed them of their arrival. Mei Yun expressed gratitude for their efforts, and with a smile, she swiftly swung her weapon, causing the instantaneous demise of all the soldiers inside. The duo stood before a colossal building, and Golden Lion wondered aloud if this was the formidable organization. Candle Demon emerged from his clothing and stated that the enemy's base camp didn't look so strong, and one breath from King would be enough to turn them into ashes. However, Golden Lion remarked that there was no rush, they would play with the enemies first. Their swift and efficient prowess allowed them to quickly defeat everyone inside the base. As he inspected some clothes, Candle Demon pointed toward a room and revealed that, according to her investigation, there might be some evidence they needed. Golden Lion looked toward the archive's room, utilizing his demonic knowledge. He soon detected a girl hiding inside, holding a gun. Intrigued by the unexpected presence, he realized that they were not the only ones sneaking in here tonight. As he opened the door, the girl inside immediately fired a bullet that hit him in the chest. Witnessing this, Xiao Ling was angered and prepared to attack. But Golden Lion stopped her, assuring her that he was unharmed. He then examined the bullet that had struck him and realized that it was a bullet made out of spiritual energy. He couldn't help but wonder what kind of technology this was. The girl was equally surprised to see that spiritual energy didn't pierce through him, leaving her wondering if her opponent was awakened. Unfazed, she unleashed a barrage of bullets on Golden Lion, who remained unmoved, allowing the projectiles to hit him. With a mere flick of his finger, he disintegrated the girl's gun into pieces. He then caught her hand and warned her not to force him, as he wasn't confident in controlling his power. The girl was taken aback after seeing his appearance and realized that he was a beast man. She was shocked to think that this organization was using the monster fusion technique. But she refused to surrender and shouted for him to kill her if he wished. Golden Lion ignored her and questioned what she was doing here if she wasn't a part of the Zhang Xing group. The girl shouted loudly and refused to reveal that she had come here because their company's development project had been stolen by Zhang Xing group and she had come here to collect the evidence. A hushed silence enveloped the room as everyone marveled at her ability to hide her intentions. Just then, Golden Lion noticed something hidden in the girl's shirt. He immediately took out the document and opened it. He was shocked to see that it was a map of Lion's Mountain, and from the markings, it was certain that these people had set their sights on his territory. Just then, a helicopter descended onto the top of the building and an announcement proclaimed the arrival of Mr. Louis, the headquarters leader. Golden Lion was surprised by the swift arrival. Meanwhile, Xiao Ling controlled her anger and repeated the name with pure hatred in her eyes. On the top floor of the building, Louis informed a red-haired lady that this was the coffin headquarters wanted. Mei Hu, an S-rank awakener and secretary of the Xiang Xing organization, mocked him for summoning her here in secrecy to inspect the goods while using candlelight as the primary source of illumination. Louis, a B-rank awakener and the manager of the Xiang Xing Lion Ridge branch, explained to her that exposure to intense light would cause the coffin to shatter and crack, and even faint candlelight was already pushing the limits. Meanwhile, Golden Lion observed from a nearby vantage point, and Candle Demon, seeking guidance from him, expressed concern about the impending movement of the coffin. Golden Lion, however, advised patience, opting to observe the situation before taking action. Louis proposed calling in reinforcements to move the coffin. However, Mayhu dismissed the need for assistance, asserting that they could handle the task themselves. She then summoned Wu Gang, an Arank Awakena and the Xiang Xing Organization Headquarters Security Captain. With her muscular physique, she effortlessly lifted the coffin onto her shoulder. Golden Lion was surprised to witness her strength and realized that Wu Gang was also an Awakena. Mayhu turned to Louis, reminding him that she had told him they didn't need any help. However, this left him confused and uncertain about her intent. 
Bei Hu swiftly threw a weapon toward Golden Lion's concealed location, revealing that there were people there. Golden Lion caught the weapon and revealed his presence, acknowledging that Mei Hu was also an awakener. Louis, now aware of the intrusion, sprinted towards them in anger, declaring his intent to kill them. He launched a kick at Golden Lion, who skillfully evaded the attack. Louis taunted him with a sly smile and remarked that his reaction speed was fast, but he challenged him to keep up with his pace. A rapid exchange of blows ensued as Louis unleashed a barrage of fast attacks. Despite taking hits, Golden Lion received messages indicating an increase in toughness with each impact. Louis laughed confidently and questioned his inability to fight back, demanding to see his true identity. Louis managed to remove his perfect disguise and was left in shock. He now realized that it was no wonder Golden Lion had great reaction speed and toughness. After all, he was a beastman awakener. Mei Hu's face blushed red at Golden Lion's apparent handsomeness. Louis acknowledged that the beast form had extraordinary defense, but questioned if he had ever been kicked by light before. He then utilized God's speed acceleration to close the distance and delivered a powerful Golden Light kick to Golden Lion's face. But to everyone's surprise, the kick had no effect on him, and it was Louis who suffered as his leg bones crumbled to pieces. As Louis cried out in pain, Golden Lion received a system message announcing his victory over a B-rank Awakener and an increase in speed, prestige, and toughness. Candle Demon praised his strength for defeating him so easily, but Golden Lion was bewildered and pointed out that he hadn't even initiated the attack yet. Mei Hu was shocked by Lumi's defeat and wondered how a B-rank Awakener could lose so easily. Just then, Wu Gang seized the moment and mocked Louis for his weakness and decided to demonstrate the proper approach. She threw the coffin directly at him, who effortlessly caught it and placed it safely on the ground. Golden Lion then burst into anger and questioned how she could throw a treasure coffin so easily. Wu Gang ignored him and activated muscle liberation, causing her muscles to grow even larger. She then confidently asserted that no matter how much her muscles swelled, they wouldn't explode, as she was wearing a specially designed nanoscale carbon fiber vest. Throwing a punch at Golden Lion, Wu Gang urged him to die obediently. However, Xiao Ling appeared behind her and stated that it was she who should die. Xiao Ling thrust a dagger at her chest, but Wu Gang used indestructible body skill and blocked the attack. Xiao Ling was taken aback as she realized that her fang dagger couldn't be pulled out. Wu Gang spoke with pride that her muscles were strong, and there was nothing in this world that could harm her, she was invincible. As Wu Gang puffed her chest even more, Xiao Ling was sent flying back. Suddenly, Golden Lion appeared behind her and questioned if her brain was as strong as her muscles. He then flicked his finger at her face, the force causing her teeth to break, and she fell to the ground defeated and motionless. Mei Hu mocked them as simple-minded trash with some strength, but she was different. She had slowly risen from a homeless girl who lost her family and lived on the streets to her current position. It was because of her intelligence and awakened special ability. Suddenly, she discarded her jacket and provocatively challenged Golden Lion to beat her up if he wanted to. She then used her charm skill on him, believing that it could make any male, be they human or beast, obedient like a slave. However, Golden Lion remained unfazed by her actions and questioned her motives. Xiao Ling and Candle Demon shouted at her in anger and called her a vixen. Mei Hu was surprised to see that her charm skill didn't seem to work on him. She then used another skill and realized that Golden Lion hadn't used his Yang energy and possessed a pure Yang body, making ordinary charm ineffective. Determined to provoke his desire, Mei Hu employed her all-out extreme charm skill, calling him with a seductive invitation. Golden Lion felt something rising, and it was definitely not the shield hero. Suddenly, a massive flame erupted from him, accompanied by a resounding roar. The flames engulfing him intensified, and his roar reverberated with increased ferocity. Concerned, Xiao Ling questioned his condition, but instead of responding, Golden Lion forcefully pushed her aside. His gaze then fixated on Mei Hu. Mei Hu fell to the ground in fear and realized that the fire surrounding Golden Lion was pure lust fire, which couldn't be controlled. Moreover, it was impossible to take it back, even if she wanted to. Xiao Ling turned to Candle Demon in desperation, seeking an explanation. Candle Demon revealed that the king had been affected by lust fire. She further explained that all things have heart fire, and this heat fire is composed of desire fire and karma fire. These two fires are extremely dangerous, so they need to be suppressed and reconciled by the practitioners in Nate Kai. However, the disturbance caused by Mei Hu had unsettled King's mental state, which, in turn, aroused his desire. Now, he was acting on instinct, and if nothing was done to extinguish this fire, 
he would be burned to death by his own desire. Meanwhile, Mei Hu, bound by the flames, reveled in perverse pleasure, shouting that she was about to die. Xiao Ling scorned her, declaring that she deserved the predicament she had created. However, Candle Demon revealed that it was still insufficient. She was demonized by absorbing King's energy, so she understood that King had a pure young body, and he had not vented it before, so no one could bear his lust. As Golden Lion used 10 years pure fire power, the flames intensified even further, and Mei Hu's moans grew louder. Xiao Ling, growing increasingly worried, questioned if all they could do was watch as King burned to death. Candle Demon contemplated the situation and wondered if she could bear the fire. As a fire entity, she pondered her compatibility with all forms of fire in the world. In a bold move, she decided to absorb his lust fire. Employing the fire ancestral return technique, she began drawing in the intense flames. However, with each passing moment, her body underwent a profound transformation, mirroring the nature of the lust fire she had absorbed. Finally, she hugged him and made a desperate plea for him to give her his lust fire. After some time, Mayhu regained consciousness, panting heavily as she questioned her survival. Glancing at the unconscious golden lion, she recognized the danger and realized she had almost burned to death. Before she could move, Xiao Ling confronted her with a drawn dagger, warning her not to move, or she would slit her throat. Golden Lion also woke up in a disoriented state, feeling an unusual softness in his body. A system message appeared, informing him that he had entered sage mode, and his mental power and focus had increased. The message also congratulated him on passing the ceremony of becoming a lion, granting him a fire attribute, and allowing him to learn the sacred fire technique. His attention then turned to Mei Hu, whose exposed clothing caused such shock that he suffered a nosebleed. Xiao Ling chastised her, but Mei Hu claimed that she was innocent this time. After Candle Demon explained the events, Golden Lion questioned if her transformation was caused by her devouring his lust fire. Candle Demon affirmed this and mentioned that once she had completely digested the fires, she can turn back to her normal form. Meanwhile, fueled by anger, Xiao Ling seized Mei Hu's throat, vowing to kill her for involving the king in such a situation. However, Mei Hu smirked in response and stated that she wouldn't let her do that. Suddenly, she escaped from her grip and immediately bowed before Golden Lion. She started pleading for mercy and promised to divulge any information he sought and to comply with his wishes. Golden Lion was amused by her quick change in demeanor and decided to inquire about the purpose behind searching for the Three Life Soul Coffin. Mei Hu admitted that her knowledge was limited, but she knew that it was a treasure used for reincarnation. According to ancient secrets recorded in the Soul Coffin, lying in it would grant inheritance in an illusion and allow one to be reincarnated. Golden Lion knew that nothing was free in this world, so he inquired about the price one had to pay. Mei Hu explained that losing oneself in the illusion would result in the dispersion of the soul, and the body turning to dust. Golden Lion pondered the potential benefits of the Three Life Soul Coffin, considering its ability to help him obtain a young body. However, the risk involved in the process was too significant. Xiao Ling broke his train of thought and asked him to let her try. However, Golden Lion mentioned that it was too risky. Just as he was about to refuse her, a system notice interrupted him. The completion of the ghost mission awarded him with a 30% increased success rate in the Soul Coffin trial. He cursed the system for giving him crappy rewards, as an increased chance didn't mean anything. Xiao Ling persisted, expressing her willingness to undertake the trial. She asserted that her life belonged to him, and if she couldn't even attempt the trial, she felt unworthy to be his ghost servant. Ultimately, he reluctantly agreed to her request. As Xiao Ling lay in the coffin, Golden Lion utilized the sacred fire technique on her. A life spirit heart fire emerged in his hand, symbolizing the connection between them. He reassured her that if her heart fire showed signs of extinguishing within the illusion, he would pull her out. As Xiao Ling closed her eyes, mysterious runes appeared around the coffin, and she was transported to the illusion. As Xiao Ling opened her eyes, she found herself in a familiar and heartwarming place. Her mother called out to her, saying that it was time to eat, and her father waved his hand, telling her to come and pour him a drink. Tears welled up in Xiao Ling's eyes as she saw her parents, but she resisted the emotional pull since she knew that it was just an illusion. Despite her resolve, she couldn't help but walk towards them, thinking that she would just go and take a look. Soon, Xiao Ling found herself immersed in a surreal scene, sharing a meal with her parents. Laughter and chatter filled the air, creating a semblance of happiness. Meanwhile, outside the illusion, Candle Demon expressed concern and asked him about the situation. Golden Lion responded that currently her vitality was stable, and he could only hope that she would overcome this calamity. 
In the illusion, Xiao Ling's parents stood proudly outside their house, surrounded by guests offering congratulations. Grateful for the well wishes, they invited everyone inside. An old man praised Xiao Ling's marriage, assuring her mother that she could now rest assured. Inside, Xiao Ling, adorned in a wedding dress, sat beside her groom, smiling as she called him her husband. Candle Demon urgently informed him that the sun was about to rise, and if Xiao Ling didn't wake up soon, her spirit would scatter. Golden Lion observed Xiao Ling's struggle. Although her vitality still burned, it was too hard for her to resist the stone coffin with her mentality. Realizing the urgency, he decided they couldn't wait any longer. He pointed his finger at Xiao Ling's forehead, declaring his intention to bring her back. In the illusion, as Xiao Ling called to her husband once more, she suddenly heard voices calling out her name. She then saw Golden Lion's face, which awakened her from the enchanting dream. As she observed her surroundings, it didn't take her long to realize that she was still trapped in an illusion. As Candle Demon urgently warned of the approaching sunlight, Golden Lion focused on Xiao Ling, whose eyes began to glow just in time. A triumphant smile crossed his face as he declared that his plan had worked. Xiao Ling had successfully awakened from the illusion, and Candle Demon was overcome with joy, congratulating her. Golden Lion looked at her warmly and welcomed her back. With teary eyes, Xiao Ling expressed her gratitude to him. Both Xiao Ling and Candle Demon hugged him, and amidst their embrace, he received multiple system messages, congratulating him on completing the bonding task and finding an ally. His reputation increased, and his demonic sense upgraded to level 3. Additionally, he awakened two new demonic sense skills, Overlook and Communion. He also inherited the Convergence formula for energizing the illusory realm. Lastly, he gained a new attribute called Kai Absorption. Golden Lion smiled and contemplated the substantial rewards from the mission pleasantly surprised by the gains from entering the illusion with a strand of spiritual wisdom. He realized that the completed inheritance received by Xiao Ling must be even more impressive. Just then, Mei Hu spoke, offering congratulations on the family reunion and expressing her intention to leave. But Candle Demon was not going to let her off easily. She pinched her ear and questioned Golden Lion about how to deal with her. Considering Mei Hu's role in his recent developments, he concluded that she might be able to assist him in upgrading his skills. Seizing Mei Hu, he declared that he wanted her to assist him in his cultivation until his sacred fire technique reached perfection. Mei Hu didn't realize what he wanted to do, and she could only exclaim in confusion. Sometime later, as the organization's building burned, Golden Lion stood outside, declaring that it was necessary to eliminate those who had set their sights on his Lion Mountain. However, his thoughts were interrupted by a warning message, revealing that the second spiritual energy wave was about to begin. In Lion Mountain, early morning, the atmosphere was disrupted by constant system messages notifying that the second spiritual energy wave had begun. The effects were palpable, and the beasts in the forest had already started sensing the changes. Green Snake entered Golden Lion's cave and called out to him in concern. However, Golden Lion, wearing a confident smile, reassured her that the moment he had been waiting for had finally come. The system then assigned a new mission, instructing him to expand the territory. The explanation revealed that the Kai Absorption attribute had linked his demonic energy with Lion Mountain, transforming the entire area within it into a source of his power. He was given the task of expanding the territory as much as possible before the conclusion of the second spiritual energy wave, in order to withstand the influx of additional spiritual energy. Golden Lion once again realized that this was a cheat system. He could just lie flat and still get stronger. Just then a warning message appeared, declaring that failure to meet the goal within the specified time would result in his body exploding due to the inability to withstand excessive spiritual energy. The progress bar remained at zero out of 100,000. Seeing this, he shouted in frustration, expressing discontent with the system's ability to spoil the mood. However, he quickly shifted his mindset, deciding to utilize his demonic sense to assess the range of Lion Mountain and test out his new skill. He activated his demonic sense, Overlook, and with this third-level demonic sense, he could observe the flow of demonic energy throughout Lion Mountain. It was like having a god's eye view. But suddenly, he noticed that his golden fruit tree was now toppled, and the pangolin who guarded the tree wasn't there. Soon, he found the pangolin lying on the ground in a sorry state. Golden Lion was enraged and demanded to know who dared to touch his subordinate. Using demonic sense, Overlook, he scanned the area and detected the lingering demonic energy left behind by the intruder. Determined, he began tracing the culprit's demonic energy, vowing to find and punish the intruder. 
Golden Lion, his tone laced with anger, rebuked the audacious intruder daring to disturb his territory. The offender had even felled his prized golden fruit tree, the primal spiritual root of Lion Mountain. The tree bore fruit every ten years, with each golden fruit granting thirty years of demonic power upon consumption. He vowed to slaughter the troublemaker and repurpose him as fertilizer for the golden fruit tree. In a commanding tone, he issued orders to his minions to take down the intruder. Golden Lion led the charge, and behind him were Lion Mountain Beast Patrol Captain Restless Parrot, Eastern Hall Master Green Snake, Northern Hall Master Giant Bear, and Western Hall Master White Fox. The group swiftly approached Lion Mountain Beast Golden Peak Guardian Pangolin, who lay wounded in a hole. Pangolin, in pain, called out to him and Bear. Giant Bear assessed the situation and reported that there was still hope for Pangolin's recovery. Observing a group of monsters ahead, Golden Lion ordered Bear to care for Pangolin. Just then, the monster let out a thunderous roar. Golden Lion was infuriated by its audacity to roar at him, and he decided to showcase the might of the Eastern Lion's roar. However, before he could act, Green Snake intervened, asserting that such trivial matters didn't necessitate his personal involvement. With swift precision, Green Snake charged at the Earth Dragon, seizing it in her grip. Meanwhile, Pangolin expressed remorse to him for failing to guard the golden fruit tree. Golden Lion, curious about the Earth Dragon's origin, inquired about its history. Pangolin explained that the creature had initially been an earthworm tending to the soil beneath the golden fruit tree. During the revival of spiritual energy, it underwent an abrupt mutation, though only its body transformed, lacking spiritual intelligence. The creature descended into a frenzy, uncontrollable and unpredictable. Furthermore, it sustained itself by consuming the decaying fruit and leaves of the golden fruit tree year-round. Once mutated, dealing with it became a formidable challenge. Green Snake swiftly cut the Earth Dragon in half, but to everyone's astonishment, the creature employed Earth Dragon's split skill, causing both severed halves to come alive. Green Snake continued the battle, but the situation turned dire as she became overwhelmed. When Golden Lion called out to her, she admitted the troublesome nature of the situation, explaining that the more she fought, the more of these creatures appeared. Giant Bear suggested joining the fight, and White Fox readily agreed. However, Green Snake vehemently refused, insisting on handling it alone. She had been diligently cultivating by the king's side day and night, and today was the day to test the results. She then used the massive demonic aura dragon transformation and took the form of a dragon serpent. She then unleashed dragon's breath upon the earth dragons, and a colossal explosion engulfed the area. As the dust settled, Green Snake reverted to her original form, exhaling a long breath. Parrot, White Fox, and Bear stood in awe of her remarkable performance. Suddenly, Parrot shouted in anger and realized that this was the reason why she always slept in the king's cave every day. He had thought it was characteristic of cold-blooded animals, but only now did he realize that she was actually cultivating using the king's demonic energy. Giant Bear and White Fox joined in, calling her a sly and cunning snake. Green Snake retorted, defending herself by asserting that Candle Demon had also been transformed by the king's demonic energy. Observing the commotion, Golden Lion remarked on the ongoing rivalry for favor among his subordinates. He then received a message indicating an increase in reputation and charisma due to affection earned from subordinates. Suddenly, Green Snake noticed remnants of the Earth Dragon escaping and swiftly pursued it, determined to prevent its escape. Golden Lion sensed that below them were the earth veins of Lion Mountain, and according to the system, his power source was connected to Lion Mountain. Hence, the potential consequences of its destruction were unimaginable. Concerned, he issued an order for his minions to descend and join the pursuit. Sometime later, Golden Lion and his group walked through a dark cave illuminated by his fire. He spotted Green Snake and inquired about the situation. Green Snake reported that the Earth Dragon had escaped underground by utilizing its ability to sense surroundings through its skin, while her sense of smell was disrupted by the spiritual energy of the Earth's veins. He activated his demonic senses and realized that the first spiritual energy wave was on the surface, while the second was within the Earth's veins. He could feel that the Earth Spirit's vibration was connected to his spine. Determined to locate the culprit, he led the group, declaring they would dig three feet into the ground if necessary. They advanced through the cave for some time, and soon Golden Lion sensed that the atmosphere there was reminiscent of the lion's den. He couldn't help but wonder if it was an ancient relic. His train of thought was interrupted when Green Snake pointed ahead, drawing attention to a scene of dead earth dragons. Golden Lion investigated further and noticed a red umbrella behind the deceased earth dragons. Suddenly, the umbrella lifted, revealing the main culprit of this incident, Red Umbrella, Kai Luo. 
Giant Bear called out to his fallen subordinates, but there was no response. Turning his accusatory gaze toward Kai Luo, he questioned angrily if all of this was her doing. Kai Luo responded with a sly smile, explaining that it wasn't her intention to waste food, she simply couldn't consume anymore. In a fit of rage, Giant Bear attacked her with the intention of killing her. However, Kai Luo effortlessly blocked the onslaught and taunted the bear for overestimating his capabilities. Witnessing the unfolding conflict, White Fox called out to Parrot and decided to join the fray. Parrot initiated an attack with the illusory Radiance Chilocosm, while White Fox employed the Fox Stealth Shadow Descent and struck with Ridge Claw. Undeterred by these assaults, Kai Luo focused on Giant Bear, causing it to cry out in pain. Kai Luo then started laughing and mocked the assembled creatures, dismissing them as unintelligent beasts, only fit to be food. Golden Lion smiled and questioned whether she took him for a mere sick cat just because the lion had not roared. Kai Luo laughed, mocking him and dismissing him as a mere little kitty. Golden Lion unleashed the powerful lion's roar, and Kai Luo responded with Brocade Celestial Defense style, indestructible, to block the attack. However, she soon realized her mistake as the roar ended, and the red umbrella she wielded fell to the ground. Golden Lion noted that only a broken umbrella remained, so he couldn't help but wonder if the female demon had perished. However, he soon dismissed this thought as he sensed her demonic energy. Kai Luo hid inside the red umbrella, acknowledging in frustration the overwhelming strength of her opponent. She pondered the origin of this formidable adversary, wondering if he was their leader. Despite recognizing her disadvantage in a direct confrontation, she questioned Golden Lion's ability to protect all his minions. Suddenly, the umbrella floated in the air and Kai Luo's voice echoed, presenting a new challenge. She unleashed the umbrella's universe, devouring heaven and earth, creating a vortex that started attacking everyone in its vicinity. White Fox recognized that the umbrella represented an alternate space and attempted to dodge it. However, her efforts were in vain as both she and Parrot were soon sucked into the umbrella. The red umbrella soared towards Golden Lion, but Green Snake intercepted it and tried to halt its advance. However, the umbrella countered, leading her to cry out in pain. Giant Bear rushed to her aid, executing the Thousand Pounds Plunge, but his attempts proved futile. Both he and Green Snake were ultimately sucked in by the umbrella. Witnessing his friends being devoured one by one, Golden Lion called out to them in worry. In the midst of this chaos, a childhood memory flashed in his mind. Young Golden Lion spoke to Bear, stating that they had successfully driven away the hyena clan. As a result, he believed the hyenas wouldn't dare to encroach upon their territory anytime soon. Bear asked curiously why he always charged at the forefront during battles. Golden Lion smiled and replied that it was the king's duty to protect his minions. This prompted Bear to adopt a thoughtful expression and realize that since they were minions, they had to charge even further ahead. On the battlefield, only Golden Lion and the Red Umbrella stood defiantly. Consumed by rage, he bellowed, demanding the return of his family. The pressure emanating from him distorted the space, rendering Kai Luo unable to move. In a frenzy, he began assaulting the Umbrella, but Kai Luo confidently explained that her Umbrella's surface was Universe Brocade, capable of endless repair, and its ribs were crafted from an ancient divine tree, rendering them indestructible. However, panic set in as Golden Lion bit into it, causing the umbrella to crack. Kai Luo, in desperation, warned that harming her would jeopardize the chance of ever seeing his companions again. Golden Lion regained his senses and questioned her statement. Kai Luo reappeared and explained that her brocade universe umbrella could gather all living beings in heaven and earth. Regardless of whether they were monsters or deities, they would all turn into pus and blood instantly. Golden Lion, determined, demanded her to release his friends. In response, Kai Luo smiled slyly and extended her foot toward him, arrogantly declaring that if he wanted their release, he had to lick her feet and be a good dog for her. Kai Luo playfully rubbed her feet against Golden Lion's fur, questioning the use of his combat prowess in this situation. She mocked him for having low intelligence and an inability to shapeshift into human form, since without hands, he can't open her umbrella. She then extended her feet toward his mouth, instructing him to lick. Golden Lion was angered, but he recalled a childhood memory where the system praised him for taming four companions who were now his closest allies. Kai Luo insisted he hurry, claiming that delaying would result in his little companions turning into blood. However, he smiled and questioned the validity of her statement. Suddenly, another golden lion materialized behind her and caught the red umbrella in his hands. With a smirk, he remarked about the perfect timing. Kai Luo was shocked, recognizing the familiar aura and realizing it was the lion's doppelganger. Candle Demon and Sayo Ling also arrived and they warmly embraced Golden Lion. 
The doppelganger, still smiling, inquired if simply opening the red umbrella allowed him to unleash his minions. As he started to open the umbrella, Kai Luo urgently shouted for him to stop. Ignoring her plea, he continued unfurling the umbrella. In a mix of excitement and discomfort, Kai Luo exclaimed, accusing him of being too rough. Golden Lion, seemingly unperturbed, commented on the tightness of the umbrella and applied more force. Kai Luo, in ecstasy, screamed for him to stop, claiming it hurt. As he completely opened it, Kai Luo screamed, experiencing an overwhelming pleasure. All of his friends who were trapped in the Umbrella universe were released. A message notified him that his young body fragment experience had expired. Candle Demon checked on everyone and reported to the king that they had lost consciousness, but sustained no serious injuries. Kai Luo, lying on the ground, expressed disbelief at the terrifying power of the lion. In her hundreds of years as a demon, she admitted it was the first time she had been easily opened by someone, leaving her unable to resist. She began retreating, contemplating the idea of devouring more monsters to enhance her spiritual energy. She vowed to make the mighty lion kneel down and beg to her. Golden Lion, recognizing the potential trouble if Kai Luo were to escape, decided to pursue her and called on Xiao Ling to join him. He assigned Candle Demon to take care of everyone else and set out after Kai Luo. Kai Luo exited the cave and leaped off a cliff, with Golden Lion following suit. However, soon, it dawned on him that he couldn't fly, and he landed on the ground. Kai Luo, laughing in the air, mocked him for his inability to fly. Golden Lion employed the sacred fire technique, unleashing the Golden Flame Devourer attack. Kai Luo agilely dodged the assault and realized that he had quite a few tricks up his sleeve. Deciding it was too dangerous to stay, she flew away, taunting Golden Lion that they would meet again. Golden Lion soon realized that the Red Umbrella had the ability to conceal demonic energy, making it harder to locate her even if he used demonic senses. He could already anticipate the unease in the future because of this. Meanwhile, Xiao Ling pondered her situation, regretting her acceptance of the Yang body transformation and entry into the stone coffin, which limited her ability to fly. Suddenly, she heard a voice in her head, reminiscent of the one she encountered in the stone coffin. She realized it was connected to the inheritance she gained when accepting the young body from the stone coffin. Although the initial experience had many characters, one stood out in her memory, the life character formula. It dawned on her that the transformation was not irreversible. Utilizing the life character formula, Yin Soul Transformation, Xiao Ling shifted back into her ghost form. Golden Lion was taken aback by the sudden change, prompting Xiao Ling to explain her newfound ability to freely switch between young body, and Yin Sol. Eager to chase after the escaping demon, she sought permission from him. Golden Lion, recognizing the complexity of the stone coffin's inheritance, noted that continuous stimulation and recalling incantations were essential for complete acceptance. He then gave her a drop of his blood, explaining that it would protect her from the skills of the Umbrella Demon. With confidence, Xiao Ling assured him that she would not disappoint him. Xiao Ling pursued Kai Luo, urgently calling for her to halt. She swiftly launched an attack, but Kai Luo defended herself with a red umbrella. Despite the formidable defense, Xiao Ling's dagger effortlessly tore through the umbrella's surface. Kai Luo, frustrated, exclaimed about the bizarre turn of events. She could comprehend Golden Lion's strength due to his high cultivation level, but she couldn't fathom how a small ghost could pierce through her protective barrier. Xiao Ling, wearing a confident smile, explained that her blade was made from a king's fang. How could the feeble umbrella withstand such power? Kai Luo vowed to make her regret her actions and utilize the umbrella universe gathered to draw her into the umbrella. Xiao Ling arrived in infinite ancient town and fell onto the roof of a building. She was shocked by the change in surroundings and wondered about the place. Soon it dawned on her that Kai Luo had transported her to another dimension. Just then, she noticed that the rain mist had corrosive properties, dissolving her spiritual energy. Realizing the unsuitability of the place for a prolonged stay, she started running. However, she stopped in her tracks as she noticed a demon ahead. Shocked, she observed it and wondered if it was a dissolving demon. Determined to escape, she sprinted in another direction, hoping to leave the mysterious dimension swiftly. However, her efforts proved futile as she encountered the same demon once again. Frustration set in as she realized escaping this place wasn't as easy as she had hoped. A sudden revelation struck her, and she mused, the most dangerous places are often the safest places. Gathering her courage, she charged at the demon. In an unexpected turn, she found herself falling, shocked to discover that gravity had shifted, the sky had become the ground, and the front had become the sky. Realization dawned upon her, this entire space was under Kai Luo's control. 
Frustrated, she called out for Kai Luo to face her, but there was no response. The corrosive rain continued its slow assault on her spiritual energy. Xiao Ling calmed down and reflected on how her friends from Lion Mountain were released only when the king opened the umbrella. As despair crept in, tears welled up in her eyes. Clutching the blood drop, she asked for forgiveness for failing him. Suddenly, the blood drop and dagger suspended in the air merged, transforming into a vibrant red sword. Xiao Ling was astonished and felt a surge of gratitude. Tears welled up as she expressed her feelings. She had always wanted to help him, but each time, it was he who saved her. She had even entertained thoughts of giving up just now. With newfound determination, she slashed the sword, and peculiar sounds emanated from the walls around her. Xiao Ling wondered if the wall was responding to her attacks. Realization struck her, and she concluded that, from the various performances of that umbrella demon earlier, that woman wasn't the true body at all. Her true form was this umbrella. With a resolute expression, Xiao Ling declared to give her all, even if she ended up exhausted from her cultivation. She focused on recalling the inheritance that could break through the encirclement, determined to eliminate the roots for the king. Suddenly, a chilly aura enveloped her, and her eyes transformed into a menacing shade of bloody red. With a swift swing of her sword, she unleashed the killing character formula, triggering the blood butcher state. Xiao Ling unleashed Blood Blade, a deadly technique that cut through the air with lethal precision. Following up with Tower Ascend, she relentlessly attacked, causing the very fabric of the world to fracture under the assault. Kai Luo winced in pain, feeling the intensity of the onslaught. She was astonished by Xiao Ling's resilience against the rain mists, erosion and impressed by her ability to persist in the face of the relentless assault. Xiao Ling observed the situation and shouted triumphantly, noting the reversal of the rain mists' flow. She then used various techniques, systematically dismantling the Umbrella world. Kai Luo exclaimed in agony and cursed her opponent. She speculated that the Golden Lion must still be tracking her demonic energy, so she couldn't stop there. Determined, she unleashed Blood Kai Condensation, summoning Yin soldiers to the battlefield. Xiao Ling was taken aback by the sight of the Yin soldiers, however, she soon realized that they were the humans and demons Kai Luo had devoured. The soldiers charged at her, but she faced them with a confident smile, dismissing any concerns about their unorthodox origin. She then swung her bloody sword, and the battle began. Meanwhile, atop Lion's Mountain, the Golden Lion utilized Demonic Sense Communion to contact Xiao Ling. However, he received a warning that his bound specter had entered an overloaded state. Golden Lion felt frustration as Xiao Ling still hadn't responded. He realized that she might have recalled a new inheritance. However, Xiao Ling's cultivation was still shallow to comprehend such profound matters. If not handled properly, this unpredictable inheritance might lead to a great disaster. On the other side, Xiao Ling had successfully vanquished the Yin soldiers, yet she remained engulfed in anger. With a cold voice, she declared that it wasn't enough and expressed the need to kill more. Kai Luo panted heavily, realizing that her remaining demonic energy was insufficient for the confrontation. Forced to abandon the plan to absorb Xiao Ling, she resorted to using the Umbrella Universe Disperse technique, effectively ending the confrontation. Near the base of the mountain, a group of individuals ascended, anticipating Lion Mountain's summit. A member of the group voiced frustration about Zhang Xing group colluding with officials and seizing their development projects. Determined to resist, they vowed not to let the organization have its way. Bing Po, a C-rank awakener and the leader of the construction group exploration team smiled confidently. He remarked that the second spiritual energy revival had begun, emphasizing the opportune moment to seize resources. However, a bald teammate voiced concerns about the government's involvement in the Lion Mountain project, fearing repercussions if their actions were discovered. Bing Po dismissed the government's authority, asserting that since the revival of spiritual energy, demons and awakeners had become rampant. Mercenaries were now essential for protection, and he questioned which development group wasn't hiring them. Just as the group pondered their next move, the bald man redirected the leader's attention to something ahead. Bing Po spotted Xiao Ling walking around in front of them and concluded that she had beaten them to their objective. He speculated that she might be from the Zhang Xing group, so he ordered his team to take her down. Bing Po unleashed an attack using ice crystals. However, before he could execute the strike, Xiao Ling's sword swiftly intercepted his hand. Bing Po recoiled in pain, clutching his injured hand and shouting in agony. His teammates, fueled by vengeance, attacked Xiao Ling with fervor, chanting for her demise. Yet, Xiao Ling moved with unparalleled swiftness, effortlessly massacring them in an instant. She gazed at the blood on her hands with a disturbing smile and remarked that the blood smelled good. 
Golden Lion arrived on the scene urgently, warning her that once she had tasted human blood, she could never go back. Despite his pleas to stop, she persisted, on the verge of licking the blood. Faced with no alternative, Golden Lion unleashed Lion's Roar, a force that struck Xiao Ling, causing her to lose consciousness. He caught her with his tail and expressed that it wasn't his intention to expose her to danger. But with the second spiritual energy wave, more changes will occur. As her ghost, Xiao Ling needed to become stronger to ensure her safety. Looking at the lifeless bodies before him, he realized the growing covetousness for Lion Mountain and decided that it was time for him to take action. Golden Lion, carrying Xiao Ling, made his way back toward his cave. Suddenly, she woke up and apologized, expressing concern about the Umbrella Demon. Golden Lion reassured her with a smile, stating that the Umbrella Demon had been dealt with. Xiao Ling was filled with joy and eagerly confirmed the news. Internally, she was pleased to have contributed to the king. Golden Lion then pondered the advantages of having a system and acknowledged that, although the main body of the Umbrella Demon had managed to escape, there was a twist in the tale. Earlier, while in search of Xiao Ling, he received a warning message about an unusual object caught between his teeth. Upon investigation, he found a red cloth stuck in his teeth and wondered if it might be a fragment of the Red Umbrella. He wondered if this fragment could be used to locate the elusive Umbrella Demon. He noted the demon's exceptional skill in concealing her aura and form, mentioning that even demonic senses proved ineffective against her. Suddenly struck with inspiration, he employed the sacred fire technique, infusing the life spirit heart fire onto the cloth. However, the cloth repaired itself, and he realized that the umbrella demon's ability to endlessly repair itself was linked to the incredible vitality of the universe percade. Even when separated from the main body, it maintained a connection. In the present, Golden Lion contemplated Kai Luo's unexpected predicament. With the sacred fire in his hand, he had gained control over her life. However, he decided to spare her, recognizing that she could still be useful. The next day, Parrot and Giant Bear, eagerly observing something, expressed delight upon its awakening. Giant Bear inquired if the item was the snack King had brought for them. Acknowledging King's prowess, Parrot remarked that after a fierce battle, he had brought two women to replenish their bodies. In front of them stood Mei Hu and Shen Shuang. Mei Hu pleaded for release, while Shen Shuang asserted that the decision to kill or let go rested in their hands. But she refused to utter a word. Golden Lion nonchalantly tossed some badges in front of her and delivered unsettling news. He explained that the exploration team from the construction group, which included her colleagues, had been wiped out at the foot of Lion Mountain by the Umbrella Demon from the Relic. Shen Shuang, shocked, exclaimed in disbelief. Golden Lion sympathized with her and mentioned that he could understand it might be hard to accept for a while. When he arrived at the scene, they were all dead, and the Umbrella Demon had escaped, he couldn't catch her in time. Just then, Golden Lion revealed that not all of her colleagues were dead. He pointed at Xiao Ling and questioned if she recognized her. This revelation left Xiao Ling puzzled, and she questioned him through telepathy about her sudden affiliation with Shen Shuang. Golden Lion explained that with all factions now eyeing Lion Mountain, he needed someone with connections in the human world. Having regained her young body, Xiao Ling was deemed the most suitable for the task. He assigned her the responsibility of gathering information about the ancient relics and sowing discord between the Xiang Xing group and the construction group when the time was right. But Xiao Ling still couldn't believe that anyone would believe in this nonsense. However, the next second, Shen Shuang hugged her with teary eyes. Witnessing this, Mei Hu accused them of collusion. Upon observing Shen Shuang's eyes, Xiao Ling discerned the effects of the restless hypnosis technique. Recognizing that Parrot had employed this technique on her, she internally resolved not to fail the mission. Subsequently, she suggested to Shen Shuang that they should descend the mountain. Upon hearing this, Mei Hu cried out and questioned whether she could also descend the mountain. Golden Lion, resolute in his decision, instructed her to remain on Lion Mountain and assist in cultivating the sacred fire technique. He ordered her to be bound and taken back to the cave for additional purposes, declaring that they would practice dual cultivation that night. Giant Bear carried Mei Hu away, but she protested vehemently, expressing her reluctance to be a power bank. Meanwhile, Xiao Ling, showing respect, bowed to Golden Lion, stating that they were ready to descend the mountain. However, Golden Lion asked them to wait a moment. He presented some golden fruits and instructed everyone to divide them, leaving everyone shocked by this unexpected turn of events. He explained that the golden fruit tree had fallen, and it would be a shame not to savor its golden fruits. He declared that every companion of Lion Mountain would receive a fair share. Furthermore, all the spirit flowers and exotic plants cultivated on the mountain would also be distributed. 
He urged everyone to exert maximum effort during the second spiritual energy revival, to enhance their cultivation and expand the territory of Lion Mountain. The announcement filled everyone with joy, and the companions of Lion Mountain shouted happily. Led by Golden Lion, the entire Lion Mountain mobilized for a vigorous expansion campaign. The Lion Legion was invincible in battle and swiftly swept through many nearby monster tribes and groups. The results were impressive, as they not only led to an expanded territory but also an increased number of followers brought under control. Consequently, Golden Lion's strength doubled. System messages indicated the success of the expansion, revealing that Lion Mountain Peak had extended its reach to the north, east, and west. Additionally, the capacity to carry spiritual energy had also increased. Golden Lion experienced growth, gaining the attribute extension of mountain resistance and two new skills, Shattered Rock Palm and Earthquake. He pondered that with just a bit more, all his meridians would be fully opened. Meanwhile, with Shen Shuang's assistance, Xiao Ling, disguised as a spy for the construction group, infiltrated the Xiang Xing group. On the southern side of Lion Mountain, across the river at the 60-kilometer White Tiger Ridge, a giant turtle approached a figure and reported that Lion Mountain had been quite restless, constantly expanding its territory, almost reaching the border of White Tiger Ridge. A crane expressed its frustration and called them extremely arrogant. He asked their leader to give him a command and promised to push back Lion Mountain or even seize it. Their leader smiled and acknowledged that with the second spiritual energy revival, everyone wanted to seize this opportunity. However, he felt that to give and not take was not polite. So, he decided to give Lion Mountain a small gift as well. 